In this lesson, we'll learn how to populate our sprite sheet with sprites that have been created for the game. So let's go ahead and get started. So once you've created all of your different sprites for our top-down 2D video game, then you can begin populating your sprite sheet with them. So once again, here is the sprite sheet that we set up in Lesson 2. Just to quickly recap, if you go to Image, Image Size, you can see the overall pixel dimensions for the canvas, which is 4096 by 4096. And if you go to Edit, Preferences, Grids, Gui uh, Guides, Grid, and Slices, you can see how we set up the grid. Basically a grid line every 512 pixels, and then we did a subdivision of two. So pretty much every one of these little square tiles that you can see right here is 512 by 512, and that's where each sprite is going to sit inside one of those little tiles. So the thing that we really want to be careful of and mindful of is that if you've got a series of sprites that are the same, that are going to be cycled through, you want to make sure that they sit in the exact same position within each one of these tiles. So our vehicle, for example, we got a lot of different iterations of the vehicle. You want to make sure that it's sit sitting in the exact same position. Otherwise, um, you're going to get a weird vibration effect um, as um, you cycle between those different sprites in the game. Okay, so we'll kind of talk about how to overcome that problem. So I'm switching over here to our vehicle, basically where we have all the different iterations of that vehicle. And so if you recall, we've got pretty much everything in groups. Each one of those iterations is a group that we basically would duplicate and we would make modifications. And so this really allows us to um, work quickly and maintain a nice level of consistency. And so before we begin bringing over each one of these sprites, what I'd like to do is um, flatten out each one of these groups. I don't want to bring over entire groups over to the sprite sheet. I want to keep the sprite sheet pretty light as far as the file size. So what you can do is for each group, so here's the group for the idle uh, position that we're looking at here. You can right click and go to merge group and it basically creates a flat layer. So I've already gone through the trouble of going through all of that for you so that we can show you here. So we can see now that all of those different sprites, all those different iterations, if you will, for the vehicle are just flat layers. Okay. So now before we can finally begin bringing these over to the sprite sheet, we need to resize this entire document. If we go to image size, we can see that it's the same dimensions as the entire canvas for our sprite sheet. So we want to change this to 512 by 512 so that each one of these sprites will sit within one of those little tiles right there um, on that grid setup that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and do that not, uh, right now and change it to 512 by 512. This may take it just a second. There we go. So the entire document has been resized. So a couple of things I want you to be aware of. Um, this will really kind of save you a lot of headache, a lot of heartache later on. Um, when you basically flattened out all of those different groups, it's probably a good idea to save that out as a separate PSD, okay? Because you run the risk of saving over your PSD that has all those groups, and if you close out the file and you come back, you, you, all you have left are flattened layers, and you can't go in and make any critical changes if you need to. So you may want to save it out as something like vehicle merged groups or flattened layers, whatever you're comfortable with. And then after you've resized it, just as we've done, you may want to save that out as a separate file as well. You could call it um, resized or 512 or whatever um, extension for the file name there. Okay? What I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to kind of undock these two windows right here so we can see how we're bringing them over. So for this first row, I want to put all of the vehicle iterations where the vehicle's moving, so that whichever direction the tires are being turned or the tires in motion, that sort of thing. And then the next logical row or the logical step would be um, all of the damage, so the, basically the vehicle exploding, and then we can do other um, in-game 
um, sprites such as you know the barriers, the random state, oil slick, and so forth. So kind of keeping everything very much ordered um, is a good idea. So right now, if I try to just say take this left turn sprite and bring it over, if you have snap turned on for the grid, yeah, it's snapping, as you can see there, but it's going to be very difficult to make sure you get it in the exact same position in each one of these little tiles. If it's not, again, you're going to get that weird vibration effect when you cycle between those sprites. So what we can do is we've got a background layer here. I'm going to take my paint bucket tool, and I want to basically fill it with a color that's very distinguishable um, from the white background that we have for our sprite sheet. So a green color I think will work great. I'm going to grab my move tool over here in my tool panel. And so what you would want to do now is holding down control, select the, that green um, fill layer, and we'll start with the left turn sprite. And you can pull both of those over, and it'll snap right in. And you can zoom in here, and you can see how it's snapping right to the grid. So you want to do that for all of the different iterations. That guarantees you the consistency of that sprite being in the same position in each one of those tiles. Uh, if for whatever reason, once again, if it's not snapping, come up to View, check mark Snap, and then go to Snap 2, and make sure you have Grid check marked. Okay? So we could come back through here and just continue on. So we did left turn. We probably want to do right turn. So same exact thing, selecting both of those two, bringing it over, and snapping it right in. So once you've done that, I would recommend getting in here, zooming in, making sure everything is snapped in perfectly. Once you have your entire sprite sheet populated, um, then you can go ahead and turn off the visibility of those background um, fill layers, okay? So I'm not going to take you through bringing in each individual sprite. That would be really overly repetitive. So at this point, what I want to show you is the completed sprite sheet. So I'll go ahead and redock that. So 09 underscore end. So here is the final sprite sheet. So what you're seeing here is a sprite sheet that um, all of these different sprites, it's all been flattened down, okay? And that's ultimately what you're going to um, be doing. My recommendation, once again, is once you bring over all these different sprites, go ahead and save out that sprite sheet as sprite sheet underscore layered or something like that. And keep all those fill colored um, layers. That way, if you need to, if your designer comes back, your game designer, and he says you need to change the order of some of these, you can easily do that easily snap them in place. You've still got those fill layers. Um, you can move stuff around. Um, it'd be super difficult to do that with the flattened one, okay? So just, you know, keep those separate files. Um, it'll kind of save you a lot of grief later on. So um, again, just kind of thinking about the logical order of things. We have all of the different movements, um, all the different iterations for the moving vehicle. So just kind of zooming in here. I'll go ahead and hide my layers panel. So the wheels moving in different directions, spinning different iterations of the left and right, um, also spinning as you can see here. And then we have the damage. And you want to put those in the order in which that that animation essentially happens. So keeping those in the order in which um, Unity is going to read them. Okay, So you can kind of see that playing out right there. So as as we brought over Again, the damage, if we go back to our vehicle example with the merged ones, this is where you would select, say, the idle, okay? You would turn on the idle visibility and that first explosion, and holding down control, you would select your background, your idle, and then your explosion. So those three, you would pull those over to the sprite sheet, and that would be, be your first one. You would do the same thing except for the second one. You would turn off the visibility of the previous little explosion and go up to the next one and so on. And at some point you're just going to bring over just those right there because now the vehicle has exploded and it's, it's gone. So 
that's how you can bring it over. And again, definitely save out a layered sprite sheet. And then um, what we're seeing right here, this is basically just an alternate version of the vehicle where we have just a different color. So, you know, if you think about having a couple of players, you want to be able to distinguish who's who on the racetrack. So we kind of have a blue as opposed to the kind of that gold that we have right there. Same setup. Uh, we have all the movement on one row, all the damage on the next. And then down here, yeah, we have other sprites like um, the boost, the flames that would come out the back, um, which Josh will be adding in in the game. We also have a couple of shadows, one shadow for the vehicle. This other shadow here can be used um, for like plants and trees and other elements. And then down here we have our track tiles. And so we'll kind of finish out by talking about this. Um, for the track tiles, I would recommend taking your track tile like this and rotating it to where it's horizontal instead of vertical, which is the way that we created it, and kind of connect it like that. So we've got our straight tile, our curved tile, and then we have the grass tile here. So I would put it like that, and it's just going to uh, read a lot better um, in the engine, okay? Otherwise, it's going to kind of start picking up this weird if you if you leave this straight tile vertical you're going to get this weird green line that's going to get picked up so um, I would recommend doing that again get with your designer over any kind of concerns that they may have as far as placement of the sprites on the sprite sheet um, so that's why it's important to really keep a layered file in case you have to move or make any changes to these sprites all right, so um, we have a few more down here. We have some for dust and smoke. Basically, the, these are different sprites here that um, uh, Josh will be able to control their size and their output, kind of like a particle. Um, this this would be um, basically a representation of the flames. This is kind of the, the boost symbol that will be used for the GUI, um, stuff like that. 